other island in the Pacific. Huh, didn't know that. Before Pangaea, there was another island, and we've got a name for it. We call it Rodinia. <laughs> Rodinia broke up 700 million years ago. Really? You mean I'm wrong? That's right, Mr. Adams, you are wrong. Rodinia broke up 700 million years ago. And your proof? Uh, we don't really have proof of that. Oh, you mean you can't figure out the time that a rock broke in half? Uh, no, but we feel we have evidence that supports it. What are you talking about? You know where Rodinia is? You see that triangle over there, that blue thing? That's Rodinia. And it started breaking up 190 million years ago. There it is, right there. See that on the, in the Pacific and that color thing? There's a triangle over here. See where the arrows point? That's Rodinia. That started to break apart 190 million years ago. Is this a fact? This map was put together by the geological community over a period of 25 to 35 years after they discovered that the more they went down to the bottom of the ocean to find fish fossils or any kind of sea life, the oldest fossils they could find anywhere in the world in the deep oceans was no more than 70 million years old. Where do we find our ancient fish fossils? On the continents, Italy, Idaho, uh, Mongolia. That's where we find our fish fossils. You don't see guys coming up from the bottom of the ocean going, I got new fossils. No, they're digging in the Gobi Desert for new fossils, for fish fossils. Idaho, that's where you find fish fossils. Why don't you go down to the deep ocean? Because there are no fish fossils down there. The ocean didn't exist. All that ocean that you see did not exist 200 million years ago. That's why the dinosaurs got to be 60, uh, 60 tons big. That's why all those continents fit together on a video that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. So anyway, there wasn't one time. Then Sam Carey said, why are we so afraid to take this theory to its next logical conclusion? It's obvious, geologically, it's an obvious geological sound conclusion. Now, I'm not a geologist, clearly, I'm a comic book artist. But Sam was probably one of the best in the world. And he said, the geology works. How do you argue with that? Well, you have geologists who can argue with that, can't you? Don't you? No. No geologist argued against Sam Carey. He presented a concept called the expanding Earth theory. And he scared the hell out of everyone, except the physicists, perhaps, who said, expanding? Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't expand. That's stupid. But, to, but the problem was, Sam Carey was a geologist, and he could say that. I have a problem with people who specialize. Okay? Geology, ask, the, ask a geologist, can matter be made? He'll say, no. Are you sure? No, it can't be made. Okay. Ask a physicist, can matter be made? Oh, explain your terms. <laughs> of course, <laughs> matter and energy are essentially interchangeable. So you can make matter into energy and energy into matter. You can't make it out of nothing, but you have to make it out of one or the other. In fact, in pair production, you have energy, and at the end, you have matter. You have an electron, which is a third of the universe, in effect, and you have positrons, which is the opposite particles. You notice I didn't say antimatter. I said the opposite particle. Two particles of matter out of energy, and <clears throat> something it hits. Then I turn back to my geologist and I say, can matter be made? And he says, no! Listen to the physicist, he says matter can be made. So anyway, so Sam Carey was a geologist. After all, he wasn't a physicist. He said growing, if he said, excuse me, if he said growing Earth, maybe physicists would, physicists would have listened for a minute. But the geologists would laugh, because they specialize. In the 60s, dozens of geologists joined Carey in his theory. There, were, there are still some around. Then one fine day, two guys, Wadadi and Benioff, seismically spotted a chunk of oceanic, descending oceanic crust subducting under another section of oceanic plate just above Samoa. 
I didn't put a little thing that says Samoa, but it's by the ring of fire by that triangle over there. Anyway, well, that just nailed the lid on Sam Carey's expanding Earth theory. Geologists didn't even try to disprove Sam Carey's theory. They just ignored it. The geological community concluded the Earth ate its own crust. Well, the oceanic crust, anyway, not the continental crust. Which is a little hard, because you've got to kind of jump over the continents to eat. Stupid. <laughs> Much better theory. At least this theory didn't turn the laws of the universe upside down. Much better. Whew. No, that's wrong. At least this theory didn't turn the theories of man upside down. Men, as we know, are historically an incredibly stupid group of creatures. Don't we know that? Haven't they been wrong about just about everything? <laughs> I mean, what have they been right about? Sun goes around the earth. <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway. But what if Sam was right? What if subduction? <coughs> like abduction and mountain building was just another consequence of a growing earth. I would like to show you a seven minute video. Hit it! <laughs> we can turn the lights. Yeah, well, I'll get them. Because otherwise, I can't stand it. Am I in your way? Yeah, sorry. This is our earth. We will be going back in time and watching the tectonic movements of the last 200 million years. We will not be applying rotation of continental plates, reducing, enlarging, sinking, or rising of plates, and only such turning rotation as is justified by magnetic striping, like the rotation of Spain, Great Britain, and Central America. This Earth globe will reduce in size to accommodate the reductions of all the oceanic plates as clearly indicated by the rainbow map of the United States Geological Survey. This being the case, it would be impossible for these upper continental plates to fit together perfectly, and yet they fit together perfectly. We invite close scrutiny. Yes, there has been some erosion, landslides, and such, but the overall result is insignificant. We have been asked to believe that the continental plates drift about willy-nilly, bumping and crashing into each other like bumper cars in a carnival. This does not happen. Continental plates never collide. They only move apart, ever. In actual fact, they don't really move at all. The rifts of the lower oceanic plates move apart as the Earth fills and grows. Do the upper tectonic plates match perfectly in the Pacific as well as the Atlantic? Yes. Do plants and trees match across the North Pole in type and kind? Yes. Why is this obvious conclusion not considered by the geological community? Perhaps it is because the ramifications are so staggering to all scientists across all the areas of science. The outer two and a half miles thick of crust of an early Earth, though slowly stretching, was all one piece until the rate of growth grew too fast for the brittle crust and 180 million years ago it began to profoundly crack and spread deep over the entire planet. We are now going forward in time to show how the actual growth of the Earth took place. Antarctica, 200 million years ago, was subtropical. Africa, rising up on a smaller globe, was originally way down under the globe. In fact, for 100 million years, Africa was the South Pole. South America's tail went under and wrapped around the bottom of Africa, then incredibly joined coasts with Antarctica. 65 million years ago and more, these continents were joined and monotremes, like the duck-billed platypus, Roam from Australia, Antarctica, and across southern South America, and up into Africa, the platypus. Dinosaurs roamed all over this world on the upper tectonic plate because there were no oceans, just shallow seas. Here today, Antarctica is frozen over, and Australia and surrounding islands are the remaining home of monotremes and marsupials. Do you see how broadly the Pacific Ocean is opening as compared to the Atlantic? This is exactly...